Hello everyone, Argon Matrix here, welcome to episode 16 of Let's Play Diddy Kong Racing. And, I gotta start off by saying I am sorry for, like, the ending of that last video, where I just, I completely let the euphoria take over in terms of commentary, and I went crazy. So I'm sorry if I made your ears bleed with that, but we finally defeated Wispig once and for all. Or maybe not, because at the very end we saw that he was still around and flew away in a spaceship. So we're gonna figure out what all that's about, but before we do any of that, uh, there's actually something that I need to show over here. Um, this is unlocked after you've completed, like, all the worlds and stuff, I think. Uh, where is it? There it is. You'll see this frog out here, with, a, like, a little red tuft of hair on its head. And when it hops, you'll hear, like, a that sound, like, listen. Yeah, like that. A chicken sounds like a chicken or a rooster or something. So what you want to do is you want to run over this frog, which is easier said than done, unfortunately. I don't want to take too long in this, but we'll see here. Get, hey, get back here. This might be easier with a hovercraft, actually. Hello? Where'd it go? There it is. Ah, oh, come on. The problem is that, like, you can't actually, like, crush it while it's in mid-hop, so you have to get it when it's... There we go. And that unlocks... Drumstick! Yay! He was a very fast racer, but I don't really like using him because he's really hard to handle. But, he is pretty fast, so I'd recommend... I'd recommend him. He was in the first episode of this LP, if you remember, but that was just because of a mistake on my end. That's how you unlock him. So now he'll be here for the rest of the time. Anyways, what we want to do now... Because, like... You're probably thinking, like, well, we've completed all the worlds, there doesn't seem any other area that you haven't explored yet. So what are you supposed to do? Well, actually, what you want to do is you want to go to the, back to the scene of the crime where Wizpig escaped in his stupid little, uh, airship thing. Spaceship. And that's out here, and there was, like, this whole, like, big scene with the lighthouse and everything. And I think what you want to do, and this won't work unless you've done... All the trophy races, I think. What if I remember right? You want to go up to the trophy race sign with all those stupid whiz pig faces just looking off to the side, really curious. And what you want to do, I think you just have to honk and yeah, here we go. <laughs> Listen to that funky beat. <laughs> you could you could turn this into a dubstep. It practically already is a dubstep. And we drive on into the lighthouse, and all of a sudden, oh yeah, it's happening! <laughs> we just, the lighthouse turns into a rocket and just blasts off to space. So get ready because we're about to be tip tops in space. And welcome, my friends, to Future Funland. This is the fifth and final world of the game for real this time. Oh, yeah. Jeez, we're up to four minutes. Not bad. So, yeah. Uh, these are probably some of the hardest tracks in the whole game. Obviously, because, like, they're the very last ones. Uh, I don't remember having too much trouble with this as a kid, but maybe that's because I just got off of beating Wizpig at, at that point. I was already used to hard things. Alright, so you need all 39 balloons that are possible to have up to this point to enter the first course here, which is Space Dust Alley. This one's not too bad, actually. But I, I absolutely love all these courses. Like this whole space atmosphere in the sky, the big starry sky with the plants in the background. Oh, it's just so fun. I wouldn't necessarily say this is like my favorite world in the game. I think that honor would still probably go to uh, World 4. Maybe even World uh, 2, I'm not sure. But this is really cool, especially the music here. This is probably some of the best music in the game, or the tracks you're going to hear in this, these courses. There's actually a shortcut if you head down here, I think. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just had to be quiet for that, like, the transition when that one instrument kicked in. I can't tell what instrument it is, actually, that kicked in. If you can tell, then please just let me know what it is. I've been dying to know for all these years. Like, what, mu what instrument is that? I want to know. I must know. Oh, but isn't this just glorious? It's kind of like a nice, leisurely plane ride in space after that whiz pig thing. Like, oh my god. But at least that's over and done with now. I never have to worry about that again. 
Actually, I was thinking about doing a bonus episode too. I, I kind of just pulled this out of nowhere. It's kind of connected, but I was thinking about doing a bonus episode where I do that first whiz pig race again, but I'm gonna use the green boost this time just to show you, just to prove, I guess, how easily he is to defeat with those green boosts. Because, like, I'm not even exaggerating when I said that I could beat him by about half a lap when, if I were to use the green boosts. I've done that before. It's insane. Um, with certain other uh, characters that you unlock, like Drumstick and uh, one other character. There's one more character, one more character to unlock. Uh, you can pretty much, you can almost lap him actually with like the last character that you unlock. It's it's crazy. You get so fast, so fast, and win. I'll show you up up this way because I haven't shown that yet. Yeah, I love all the nice little details in this space courses too, just like all this electricity coursing everywhere and all the weird little artistic structures. It's really fun. It can be kind of annoying too, because like, all, there's so many things just to bump into in these courses. Like all those asteroids and, I don't know, the walls, they're just so much more appealing now that they're all purple. Yup. Right, there's one course in particular, I think it's Spaceport Alpha over there, that's going to be pretty hard. Oh, wait. <laughs> I love the way that he said, like, TT the narrator, whoever it is, I love the way he says that. Dark Moon Caverns! It's just so perfect, I don't know. Oh, and this is the music that first played when we actually just, like, a little while ago when we entered the lighthouse and turned into a rocket. I think this is the music I was playing. So that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, this one's this one's like not my favorite course of the bunch. I think my favorite course of the future Funland is probably Star City, which some of you might remember from a Challenge Sunday video I did a while back. But there is something really fun about this course, and I think it's coming up right here. Oh yeah, we got a loop de loop and spaceships flying in between the loop de loop. That's cool. And then we go through this little, like, jagged cavern here, and there's another one! <laughs> oh, just for double the enjoyment. Oh, man. It's like one of those double loop roller coasters. Those are fun. Oh, they have one of those at Callaway Park, which is, like, an amusement park near me. It's a pretty crappy amusement park, but that roller coaster is pretty awesome. Honk. <laughs> They, they've gone heavier on like the neon aspect of this place like all these neon flashing arrows these things shooting down at you all the it's just so vibrant it's really cool it's kind of like almost this doesn't fit with the atmosphere of the rest of the game because all the rest of it was kind of quaint and just there was something different about that and like when I came to this area when I finally finally got to this area as a kid after many years of playing the game Mostly Whizpig and the Greenwood Silver Coin Challenge. That's what I remember most from my childhood experiences. But when I came to this world, I was just kind of like, I just wasn't, it just didn't feel as much like Diddy Kong Racing anymore. But it still is Diddy Kong, it's like, there's still that feeling, you know? That crintallic feel. <laughs> I have to post those videos still too. I still have to post those failure Whizpig videos and Argonaut Dominatrix. That's going to be kind of awkward now because I don't, because I've already beaten Whizpig. Oh well. There were so many random things I came up with that in that recording though. But you know what? That's in the past now, so I can't be talking about like Whizpig anymore. It's just all, it's just that's all that's been on my mind for the past week or two. Whizpig, because that's all I've been doing. But there you go. That was uh, what was that? Space Dust Alley? Uh, Dark Moon Caverns. That's right. Dark Moon Caverns. <laughs> it almost sounds like he says Dark Moon Taverns. I would do Star City first, because I kind of want to save the hardest for last, but I don't have enough balloons for Star City, strangely. So, let's do Spaceport Alpha here. Yeah, this one's pretty difficult, but it is really cool, too. I love the music, I'm just going to let it play for a little bit here. No, it doesn't really get into like the really good part until later on. Yeah, like here, when the trumpet or whatever it is kicks in. That's badass, man. This might be my favorite song in the game, actually, this little tune here. Oh, this little alleyway here with all these shooting guns. Just be careful like not to get into the line of sight of any of the guns like that. 
Otherwise, you're kind of screwed and you'll run into things like that and get knocked into fifth. Oh, jeez. They're all in a single file line. Look at this. Oh, how silly. I, I spent a fair amount of time on this one as a kid, too, on this course, because this is, prob like I said, probably the hardest course out of the whole bunch. I wouldn't necessarily say the hardest course in the game. Right here, that's kind of tricky to, like, you have to get the right angle to dive down into that passageway at. Otherwise, you just bump your head on the top. Give you a big owie. Oh, I missed that zipper over there, I know, and Bumper got it and zoomed right past me. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Jeez, am I gonna lose this? I don't want to lose this. If I'm losing just this normal race to bumper here, what what's that gonna say for the silver coin challenge of this place? Because the yeah, there still are silver coin challenges for each of these. Even though there's like really no boss of this world, well there kinda is, but that's <laughs> that's we'll save that for another time. Uh, but there's like no technical boss that's gonna tell you collect all the silver coins from Future Funland and win. So technically, we'll never hear and win within the game ever again. No one will ever say it again. Very sad, I know. Oh, man, I am going to lose this. What the heck? <laughs> well, I said it was hard. I shouldn't be surprised that I'm losing. I don't know. Dude, what is up with my eye? My right eye. It feels like there's like a rose thorn in it or something. I don't know. Crap, I lost. Well, I'm like right on top of the finish line. I might as well finish. There we go. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's also there's no mini mini game in Future Funland, so don't worry about trying to find a key. I think it would have been really cool, actually, like if they had a mini game here, because I can only imagine the kind of stuff they could pull off with a mini game in outer space. Like, come on, really? Like they had a. They had the chance to. They could have done it very easily. There's plenty of little like nooks and crannies in these courses that they could have hit a key in. And I probably would have designed it so that, cause like, before this we've had the Icicle Pyramid, which was kind of like a battle royale where you had to kill your opponents. That was on cart. Then we had a uh, Dark Water Beach, which was doing the same thing except in a hovercraft. Why not do the same thing here except in a plane? I mean, that makes sense to me. Especially since a lot of the courses in this world are flown in planes. I wonder what it would have looked like if they had made like a hovercraft enabled course in this place. That would have been so weird. Well, that's probably why they didn't do it, because it would have been completely out of, out of the space aspect. God, I hate that stupid wall. <laughs> you know, like the big 64 on the ground there. I didn't really point this out, but like the very beginning of the race, there's like numbers on the wall. And I don't know, I found that, I always found that kind of weird, like, I think it's always the number 337. So if you add a 1 onto the front of that, then, then this is a pretty elite course, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah, like look carefully on the walls past the starting line here on our final lap. On the green walls coming up ahead, and there's the numbers 337. And N64, I saw that too. Oh, Diddy, come on. I hope he crashes into the wall. What the hell? I don't even know what I just did there. Yeah, the computers always tend to crash into that wall when coming out of the updraft. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. It's a pretty easy wall to crash into, actually. Alright, careful here. There's like one gun that if you're unlucky enough, it can hit you right as you come out of the zipper. Because there's like a point that you can hit on the zipper, and if you fly through it, then you're right in the line of sight of a gun. Alright, Bumper, you're not going to beat me again. Not again! Oh, no, I won, it looks like. Did it say scare on top of that finish line, or did it say start? I don't know, it looks like scare to me. But that wouldn't make any sense, really. Alright, we're up to like 15 minutes here, so I think I'm going to call it quits here. And, um... Next time, we are going to go ahead and just move on to Star City, and then probably start on the f Silver Coin Challenges of the world. So, until then, thanks everyone for watching. This has been Argon Matrix, signing out. Thank you, and good night.